Has your doctor talked to you about a cortisone injection or a PRP injection, but you're wondering, how are these different and which injection is the right injection for you? In this video, I'm gonna break down these key differences and talk to you about my preferred injection treatment options. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Sonam and I'm an interventional sport medicine doctor up here in Canada. Now, today I'd like to break down the key differences between a cortisone injection and a PRP injection as this is a common question I get in clinic on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, both cortisone and PRP, or otherwise known as platelet-rich plasma injections, are used to treat both tendon and joint pathology. So I will talk about both of these aspects of both of these injections in the video today. Number one, what are these injections made of? So cortisone is an anti-inflammatory molecule. It is a drug and a drug that we inject into the body. PRP, on the other hand, is something that we prepare in clinic. It's known as platelet-rich plasma. And the way we make it is we will draw someone's blood, we will spin it down and we'll inject the concentrated platelet-rich plasma portion into both a joint or a tendon. Number two, the mechanism of action. So cortisone is an anti-inflammatory molecule and how it works is it goes into the area that we inject it, will help decrease inflammation, which will help treat pain and swelling. So PRP injections work slightly differently depending on whether or not we're injecting them into a joint or a tendon. Specifically with a joint, when we inject PRP, these growth factors go into the joint, stimulate healthy joint fluid production, decreased inflammation, as well as decreased rate of cartilage breakdown. When we inject PRP into a tendon, it essentially asks the body to stimulate healing at that site. So these growth factors go in and it stimulates an inflammatory response to tell the body to start healing itself at the site. And that ultimately helps heal a tendon. A key difference that I do want to point out in PRP injections is PRP cannot regenerate cartilage in a joint. It mainly decreases the rate of progression of osteoarthritis, whereas PRP in a tendon can regenerate the actual integrity of the tendon. What can these injections be used for? So both cortisone and PRP injections can be used to treat both tendon and joint pathologies. I do want to preface this by saying PRP does have a more regenerative component to it. So it will slow down progression of arthritis and it can actually heal tendon tears, tendinosis, tendon irritation. Whereas cortisone is mainly a pain relieving medication. It will decrease pain and swelling, but it does not work on the underlying pathologies of why you may have that issue to help heal it. Number four, how effective are these injections? So on average, cortisone is a very strong molecule and is effective in about 95 to 97% of my patients. PRP, on the other hand, is a bit more specific. So I do quote people that approximately 70% of people get benefit. However, if they get benefit, they're getting benefit from a natural treatment that is working on regenerative capacities or also decreasing the level or the rate of arthritis progression. Number five, how long does it take for these injections to start working? So cortisone injections will start to work within the first four to seven days. However, in some of my patients, I have seen it take up to two weeks to take full benefit. With PRP injections, because it's a more natural approach to treatment, it can take up to 12 weeks to see full benefits. Number six, what are the side effect profiles of these medications? Now I'm gonna briefly cover this in summary, but I have detailed videos on each of these injections that I'm gonna link down below. What are the main side effects that you're gonna see? Mainly from just poking the skin. So both of these will have the same. One is bleeding, it is minimal. Two is infection, it is approximately one in 10,000. And then the most common side effect that people will experience is post-injection pain, mainly because we're poking the skin, which will last for approximately one to two days. Now, what are the specific side effects associated with cortisone injections that differ from PRP injections? So the first thing that people can experience is a post-injection flare to cortisone injections, and that's where pain gets worse for the first one to two days and then settles down over time. And the reason why that happens is there's a reaction to the molecules of cortisone within the actual injection. Number two, some of my patients will actually get a bloodborne uptake of cortisone and approximately 5% of the cortisone medication will get absorbed into the bloodstream. And because of that, people can notice an increase in their blood pressure and blood sugar numbers for up to a week after the injection. Some of my patients will also experience a headache just because of that increased level of blood pressure. So I do warn patients to be mindful of this. Now, when it comes to cortisone side effects in the actual tendon and joint, this is a little bit different depending on where we inject it. Specifically in joints, there is some research that repetitive cortisone injections can thin out the cartilage over time. So we do wanna be mindful of how many injections we perform in a joint. And on average, I do not like to do them more than three times a year. In tendons, there's actually some research that cortisone can weaken the tendon 
over a short period of time following the injection. So once I inject someone, I tell them to actually take it easy and minimize load on that tendon for approximately one to two weeks and then gradually return to activity afterwards to decrease the rate of an injury in that area, in that site that we've injected. Now, an extremely rare side effect of cortisone injections is avascular necrosis of the joint. So what happens is it's the bones that create the joint have decreased blood flow to that area and the bones essentially break down and collapse. Now, AVN can happen due to trauma, due to oral pain medications, due to intra-articular cortisone injections, and even for no reason at all. But it is quite serious if it happens and patients will need multiple surgeries and even potentially a joint replacement to fully treat this condition. One of the last cortisone side effects that I will see is skin atrophy and whitening or hypopigmentation. This tends to be more common in areas closer to the skin. So if you're doing a tennis elbow injection or a dequirvins tenosynovitis injection, I do warn patients that this can happen. So after the injection, you can notice a bit of a divot because the skin is kind of thinned out in that area, as well as whitening of the skin in the area of the injection. Now, what are some specific side effects related to PRP? Well, we talked about the side effects related to the actual injection, but I tell people the biggest side effect of PRP is the pain associated with it. In joints, this is not so much of an issue, but in tendons, I warn people that pain can be considerably worse for the first week after the injection until things start settling down. And the reason why is we're creating an extreme inflammatory response to help the body heal this tendon. And because of that, I warn people that pain may actually get worse with a tendon injection and then it will settle down. And I actually send people home with stronger pain medications like Tylenol 3 or Tramadol to make sure that they can get through the first five to seven days following the injection. Other than that, PRP injections are relatively very safe because they're made from your own blood product. That's one of the reasons why people really enjoy them because the side effect profile is actually quite minimal. Number seven, aftercare instructions and pain following the injection. So pain following the injection and aftercare will differ both between cortisone and hyaluronic acid. Mainly with cortisone injections, if I'm injecting a joint, I tell people to take it easy for the first 48 hours and then thereby increase their activity slowly afterwards. If I'm injecting a tendon, I'm a bit more tenuous and I tell people to wait about a week or two before starting to load the tendon because cortisone can weaken the tendon for a short period of time. With PRP specifically, the recommendations will differ and they are a little bit more advanced. So I have videos on all of these recommendations that I'm gonna link down below. But mainly when it comes to PRP for a joint, you're gonna to wanna to take it easy for the first week and then slowly increase your activity thereafter. With PRP for a tendon, it is going to hurt for the first five to seven days. So I tell people not expect to do much for the first week, range of motion in week two and then gentle loading week three onwards. Now, I have detailed videos of my aftercare instructions for both of these injections that I'm gonna link down below and I would encourage you to watch them. Number eight, the cost of these injections. So cortisone injections are extremely affordable and are covered by a variety of drug programs as well as social assistance programs in Canada. On average, you're looking at anywhere from 30 to $60 for an injection. PRP injections on the other hand are considerably more expensive. They're on the order of six, seven, eight hundred dollars and above, and many insurance plans in my experience do not cover them because there is no drug identification number, which means that we make it in office and because of that insurance programs really don't know what to do with it. So that summarizes a little bit about the differences between cortisone and PRP injections. Now, what injection would I recommend as a first line option? With all things being equal, I would actually encourage people to start with a PRP injection if they have the ability to do so, mainly because it's got a more favorable side effect profile and it is a much more natural treatment option. In joints, it helps decrease the actual rate of arthritis progression. It's a natural injection that won't make arthritis worse. It helps decrease inflammation in a natural way. And with tendons, it can actually regenerate tendons itself. So I always encourage people to start with the PRP injection and if it's not effective, you can always then transition to a cortisone injection as a second line option. But that is what I'd recommend to start. However, I always make these decisions with my patients in office because these plans are all personalized and it is on a patient per patient basis. So I encourage you to chat with your doctor to talk about which option is right for you. So that's my brief summary of the differences between cortisone and PRP injections. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. For now, that's all.